Lower Swift Creek is an important trout spawning tributary of Western Wyoming's Salt River, an important resource within the center of Star Valley's cultural, economic, and recreation activities. The Salt River has multiple uses, including native and trophy trout fisheries, ranching and agriculture, and recreation and tourism. While the Lower Swift Creek tributary has its importance as a trout spawning tributary, unfortunately it also produces significant amounts of sediment naturally from upstream in the drainage and unnaturally from large eroding banks found throughout the course of the creek. That sediment eventually flows right into the Salt River, making the creek and river unstable by depositing and building bars in locations that push the water towards banks, which creates even more erosion in a domino effect moving downstream. Eroding banks pose a threat to pasture lands, riparian areas, and in-stream habitats like riffles and pools. Star Valley resident Max Merritt is an adjacent landowner to Lower Swift Creek. It's just a big deep channel with uh, banks four or five feet up, uh, undercutting. These bends right here that we're looking at now sometimes cut back three or four feet each year. My dad used to put old cars in here, and it worked just fine until they started eating behind the cars, and then we had a bigger problem. Landowner Larry Neald also resides along Lower Swift Creek. It was eroded real bad, especially down in my place where the topsoil is probably five to six feet deep. And so all the corners had washed and the erosion and all the silt going into Salt River. The Salt River is regarded as a blue ribbon trout fishery. It's a fishery that does not require stocking, supporting Snake River cutthroat and brown trout populations. Bluehead sucker, a Wyoming species of greatest concern, and mountain sucker also make the salt their home. Wyoming Game and Fish Department aquatic habitat biologist Anna Senecal says the unstable tributary was dramatically affecting trout spawning. So cutthroat trout require certain conditions to be able to successfully spawn. So that looks like stable flows during the spring at certain times of year. It looks like particularly sized substrate, so not too big, not too small. Um, it looks like clean gravels, not too much sedimentation. So oftentimes when a stream is out of balance, when there's a lot of bank erosion, when we don't have a lot of stream side vegetation to hold things together, what we end up seeing is either a stream that's really steep, so it has rocks that are too big, a stream that's really eroding uh, excessively, and so then we have a lot of fine sediment filling up the riffles, and we just lose that habitat. Landowners like Larry Neald and Max Merritt eventually reached out to the Natural Resources Conservation Service, or NRCS, and the Wyoming Game and Fish to see if something could be done. The answer was yes. It provided an opportunity to partner with the landowners and others to do something significant and long-lasting. Leslie Steen is the Northwest Program Director for Trout Unlimited. Her organization was actually working on another project nearby when one of the landowners approached her about what else Trout Unlimited could do for Swift Creek. So we started working with Game and Fish, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Natural Resources Conservation Service and the local Star Valley Conservation District on coming up with a plan to restore the section of stream. The issues that we have on Lower Swift Creek, they're also found throughout the rest of the Salt River drainage. And we hadn't done a big showcase kind of restoration project like this in this part of Star Valley yet. And we thought it would be an opportunity to show these different practices that could be done where, you know, in, in treating the stream, in um, restoring it, you're not only doing restoration for the fish, but you're also doing it for, you're meeting the goals of the landowners as well, the other partners. Projects like this, though, aren't cheap. Restoration in this particular instance was going to be over one million dollars. This is going to be an over a million dollar project between cash expenses and in kind. And so you can imagine we had to work with a number of different partners, foundations, state agencies, federal agencies, I believe over 15 partners on this project. The restoration project began in 2019 on a mile of Lower Swift Creek near its confluence with the Salt River. The goals were clear, protect and improve spawning cutthroat trout habitat in Lower Swift Creek, reduce sediment contributions to the Salt River, and reduce landowner flood risk and maintenance requirements in Lower Swift Creek. It would involve floodplain grading, pool excavation, channel narrowing, and installation of structures to maintain grade, 
reduce the force of water hitting banks, increase pool depths, maintain riffle elevations, and increase the amount of wood in the channel. The landowners agreed to adjust pasture fencing and grazing schedules to accommodate riparian regeneration. Vegetation like cottonwoods and willows were incorporated into in-stream structures. Disturbance to vegetation was minimized and riparian planting and seeding took place. The work involved 3,500 feet of riparian fencing, 35 acres of riparian planting, and three acres of wetland enhancement. Again, Wyoming Game and Fish's Anna Senecal. So what that looked like was basically rebuilding the stream. So there are portions like this here where the stream channel was rebuilt in place. And then there are portions of the stream that were completely reconstructed in new channels. There was heavy equipment that was moving rock and placing logs, reforming the channel dimensions, making it narrower, making it deeper making sure that the riffles are where riffles should be and the nice deep pools are where deep pools should be. And what that's gonna do is protect the stream banks over time from eroding further. By spring 2021, the restoration project was nearing completion. The Swift Creek Restoration Project is anticipated to serve as an example to other landowners along Salt River tributaries and the mainstream river corridor. Swift Creek suffers from similar habitat degradations like those found here that are common throughout the drainage. Kaylin Neald is the district manager for the Star Valley Conservation District, which provided funding for the restoration project through a Wyoming Department of Agriculture Water Quality Grant, as well as a Wyoming Water Development Commission Small Water Project Grant. And we're hoping to use this as a pilot project um, because there's other places along Salt River that could use some work like this. So we're hoping that this can be a pilot project for landowners to look at and see what, what we can do uh, to help reduce sediment in the Salt River. We've had some other landowners come down and look at it and um, they're interested in you know, how it holds and what we've done here, so it's been good. And while Lower Swift Creek won't be accessible to anglers, that wasn't the purpose here. By improving the habitat, the fish will come and spawn here, swim out to the Salt River, then return to this small creek to spawn again. Here again, Leslie Steen of Trout Unlimited. You know, at the end of the day, Trout Unlimited is hoping to see a thriving fishery in Star Valley. And we have that in the salt to some degree already. We've got a blue ribbon fishery. It's an incredible fishery that, you know, local and um, visiting anglers love to fish. Um, but we can't take the resource for granted. And so, you know, by doing projects like this work on Swift Creek, what we hope to see is that fishery continue to thrive for there to be, you know, in Lower Swift Creek, not just adult trout moving in, but all different size classes and different life stages of trout and other native species as well.